Welcome to Spooky Ass Shit. I am your host, Eric Dwanells, and tonight, my returning guest, the woman of mystery, Kristen. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Happy to be here. Good. Now, uh, we're going to be talking about the true stories, and maybe stories isn't really the right term, the true things that inspired Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street. And they're all, it's it's not just one thing or one event or one person or anything like that. It's a, it's a bunch of things put together by the director, Wes Craven. Okay. Now, I did not realize that it was based on anything. Yeah. We're going to get into all that Freddy goodness in a little bit. But first, there's a little housekeeping to do. First of all, I do apologize that there was no episode last week. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you know the reason why, because I posted a little blurb on Facebook about it. But basically what happened is Tom Cole came over, frequent guest co-host, and we did record a full episode. Mm-hmm. And it was about cults and brainwashing and all that kind of fun stuff. And it was actually the second time we recorded that episode because we recorded one before. Okay. But my notes on it were a little disjointed and we finished it and I listened back to it and I said, you know, I just feel like we could do this better. Specifically, I could do it better, really wasn't what you were looking for right and i said why don't we try this again sometime and he said okay no problem and i was very grateful Mm -hmm. so then we tried it again and this time there's it didn't it didn't appear so on the recording and i couldn't hear it while we were recording but when i'm listening to the playback and getting ready to edit it there's this like cracking noise like this cracking electric interference noise through the whole show so i think Cults are trying to stop me. That was my from thinking explaining as well. What's going on? I'm not saying it was Sai Tai. <laughs> but it was Sai Tai. Third so, time's a charm, maybe. I don't. I think uh, we both were pretty pissed when we realized what happened. So we might just say fuck it. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. It was a good episode. Maybe I'll post the full thing, and if people want to try to listen through the crackling. Through the buzzing. I won't post it on the iTunes or anything, but maybe on Facebook or something like that. Uh, Speaking of Facebook and all that kind of stuff, if you want to join us on Facebook so you can get these little insider looks as to why there is or is not a show and, and what problems we might be having or what triumphs we might be having. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's good to celebrate, too. You can find all that information all the social media accounts on our website, spookyas.com or spookyassshit.com. They both take you to the same place, and that is the show's blog page, where you'll find this episode and every episode, and you'll also find pictures from every episode, and sometimes outtakes and and YouTube videos that might relate to it, and links and all that kind of good stuff. You'll also find links to the social media accounts. We are at spookyassshit on both Twitter and Instagram. And you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash spooky as. Everything you could possibly need. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I am mostly active on Facebook. I'm really bad at Twitter. Although we do, um, they go, so this podcast goes automatically to YouTube now. Nice. I upload it and it just automatically gets added to YouTube. And then that automatically gets sent out through my Twitter. So hmm. if you, that's like an interesting I'm trying to find a better way to use the Twitter. Yeah, I I, I do not use Twitter yeah, at all. So I don't I, know. I just, even in my like my personal Twitter, I don't really use it. Yeah, I don't understand it. I basically I'm an old man, I guess, and I stick to Facebook. <laughs> Facebook's like old now. It is very. Yeah. It's like that Simpsons quote when Grandpa's like, "I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me." It'll happen to you. Kristen. Yes. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. I don't want to give away your age. Okay. Because I know women tend not to like that. But you were a young woman when this when these movies were super popular. I remember seeing it in the theater. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, it was quite a long time ago, but I remember... Liking it very much, and it being scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Scream was the big movie that came out when I was in high school. That was like... Uh, that was the big Scream one. and the Blair Witch. Oh, okay. Both yep. came out while I was in high school. 
So those are big deals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can imagine. I mean, that's really what these horror movies are for. Like those, that teenage audience that would be going to see those things. Uh, so yeah, I re- my first memories of Freddy, actually, it might be the first like slasher movie that I ever saw okay. was um, the Dream Warriors, Freddy and the Dr- versus the Dream Warriors, which I think was part three. I'm not 100% sure. I get the movies mixed up. It's not that I'm not a fan. I'll get emails being like, you're a poser. Like, maybe I yeah. am. But, you know, I, there's that, whichever, that's my favorite one anyway, The Dream Warriors. And I'm almost certain it's part three. Because I also like Friday the 13th, part three, the best. Okay. It's not so. the most interesting story wise, but to me, it's the perfect Friday the 13th movie. Like so it's the got the camp, it's got the, well, apparently that's the part threes that right. I like. The, the sequels don't do it, but then yeah. the third one comes back. Because the first one is good. Well, actually, Nightmare on Elm Street, the probably the original is the best one. But I got to be honest with you, and this is going to hurt some Friday the third, I mean, um, some, God damn it, Nightmare on Elm Street fans out there. Okay. But Heather Lagenkamp, who plays like the lead female. Okay. Yeah. I don't think she's a very good actress. <gasps> She's oh. a little bit tough to watch at times. Wow. Okay. Um, very nice in person. I've met her. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. I have her autograph hanging you in my hallway. You didn't tell her that. No. I mean, she got <laughs> better because she's better by uh, uh, New Nightmare. But, you know, that first movie. But the but what's worse than her, what really bothers me, is the woman who plays her mother. All right. Like the most I'm robotic. i trying to remember that. Yeah. And like this terrible monologue, it's just, I, yeah, I don't know. So there's things I don't love about the first movie, but okay. anyway, I'm more of a Friday the Thirteenth guy than I am a Nightmare on Elm Street guy. But there you have it. Yeah, I think the first one, Nightmare on Elm Street, was it was different for us because it was you know it was exciting because it was during that time and. It was a different story. It wasn't another yeah. Friday the Thirteenth or oh yeah, any well of those. he de- so he, I, he definitely has more personality. Obviously, you know Friday's yeah. a great character. No two ways about that. But so I remember watching it late at night with my brothers, and my oldest brother was like telling me to go to bed, and I was like, no, I want to watch it. <laughs> and he's like, fine, but if you get nightmares, don't like don't come crying to me and don't tell mom, right? Because like, tell you, I told you not to told watch it. Told you to go to bed. Yeah, and I was like. Mm-hmm. But I remember I was in second grade. I remember that specifically Wow. Okay. because because uh, I went in the next day to school and I wrote a story like based on it. <laughs> I'm sure the teacher loved that. Well, I didn't say it was like about Freddy. I don't think I don't think I did. <laughs> Some questions going home. No, I think it was like about because I was obsessed with the knights. OK, like medieval times. Yeah. Back in those days. And I think it was about a red knight. That would show up and like, you know, try to torment people. But he was a bad guy. I don't think I made it that gory. I was a pretty good kid, okay. so I think I probably you knew known. better than yeah. to. But I do remember there was like a part where they were in a hall full of mirrors, which happens. Okay. Yeah. And Dream Warriors, and there was like a silent character that suddenly could scream, like too. <laughs> yeah, that's all from the movie. I do remember writing that and drawing pictures for it, and I wish I still had it, but yeah. I don't. But. I did like Freddy and he, the thing about him was like all those movies, even, you know, um, the Friday the 13th movies, but they were like naughty and Mm -hmm. not just in the fact that they were slashers, but like there was like a sexual aspect to them, whether or not there was actual nudity or anything like that. Some movies had them, some didn't. Right. But like as a, like a, you know, a slightly prepubescent boy, like you're still like, oh, I know I'm not supposed to see whatever I'm seeing here, but right. You know, and I remember we were watching another one that one of my friends had taped and we were watching it like in the afternoon and my brother came home and like uh, he like saw there was like people starting to make out and he turned it off on us and we were like, man, uh, yeah. hell. <laughs> but so there. So and then, of course, going back to video stores as a little kid, I used to go and just like stare. No, before Blockbuster. Oh. Um, actually, where I work right now used to mm-hmm. be a video store. Okay. Yeah, home cinema. Oh. And that's where I used to go and rent movies. And uh, I would just go and stare at the horror section and be like, oh, man. I wish and I you saw the these. commercials. So you knew Freddy was like 
this like kind of comedy character, mm-hmm. you know, but he was also like a murderer. Right. But <laughs> so it was really tantalizing to a young brain. So it's no wonder that I got hooked on all this stuff, really, if you think about it. And, yeah. But see, people only know the listeners for the most part, because people that I know don't really listen to the show. Because okay. everyone's always like, you have a podcast? I'm like, yes. I've been telling you guys. So it's mostly strangers that listen to the show. So they don't know me outside of the show. Okay. But most people don't know that I'm like into horror movies and, you know, spooky ass shit. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's kind of weird because you're in like a, you're not that kind of guy. Right. So people who know me well enough are like, oh, he's totally that kind of guy. They know. But They know. <laughs> yeah. I, I had an ex-girlfriend um, who I remember when the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre was coming out. I was excited because I had met the guy that played Leatherface. Mm-hmm. at spooky world old spooky world back yeah. in the day and he was super cool and i was like oh this is gonna be good you know and the movie wasn't it was fine yeah. but um you know not the original but uh i remember my ex-girlfriend's mom was like how can you be excited about that like you're so normal and i was like okay yeah well come on <laughs> horror movies are mainstream now that's right normal people can like horror movies Yes, but so tonight, Kristen, specifically what we're talking about is where did Wes Craven get the inspiration to make Freddy Krueger? Okay. So I got a whole list here. So let us begin. Delve into it. Now, I I mentioned already that it's not exactly based on a true story. It's based on several true things that happened. Okay. So first of all, his name. Let's talk about that. Freddy Krueger. Okay. Freddy was the name of the high school bully where when Wes Craven was in high school. So that's where he got the name Freddy from. Okay. Krueger comes from a character in his first movie, Last House on the Left. All right. Which was co-directed by Sean Cunningham, who went on to produce... Friday the 13th. So before these guys had anything to do like with the mainstream horror, they were making this little independent movie, Last House on the Left. Okay. Do you know anything about that movie? I recognize the name, but... Yeah, it came out, again, I don't know specifics, and I know there's horror fans out there. They're like, no, it came out in... It was either like 69 or 70, 71, something around, you know, that time frame. Now, did they also remake that? They did. Okay. Yeah. Um. The remake was nothing to write home about. But even the original is not for everybody's taste because it's pretty intense. Okay. It's a realistic horror um, about this like gang of people that capture these two women and then commit all kinds of sex crimes against them and then uh, murder them. But then they end up spending the night in the parents' house, the parents of, the, of one of the girls that they murdered. Oh, but they okay. don't know it's the parents, but the parents figure out who these who people are eventually, are. and then it becomes okay. I a, do, you know, I cat remember and mouse this between story. the killers and the parents, and you know, it's interesting. But I will say, it's not for everybody. Okay. But I mentioned that it was like about a gang of people that went through. Right. Well, the leader of this gang was a man named Krug. Oh. So that's where it's Kruger? like a little throwback to. So Freddy Krueger is based on two elements from his past now i've talked about this before on other shows but one of the things that i was afraid of as a child was windows at night and Uh i I know jenny blades another frequent co-host shared this fear with me i don't know if you ever had this but i was always afraid that if i looked out the window at night i would see someone like either walking up the driveway or walking down the street which would be very unusual in my neighborhood i lived in a little cul-de-sac there's like you knew everybody right, so if there was just right. like a random person walking around at midnight it would be fucked up right it was somebody that was there for a reason right a bad reason right and in my imagination i even kind of pictured him not looking like freddie in the sense that he'd be burnt up and everything but right but looking like freddie and like wearing a hat and just kind of i guess i don't know maybe i heard the story of uh, a west craven story and maybe i thought i don't know maybe it like kind of um cross-pollinated or something Mm -hmm. but anyway his story is very similar but he says one night when he was a kid he looked out the window of his apartment building 
and there actually was a person standing outside. Not right out the window, but walking by. Yeah. And he looked out and saw him, and he said he looked a lot like Freddy Krueger, but he said, uh, you know, I think, you know, maybe the guy was a wino or something like that. Right. Um, and But he had the fedora, and he had a sweater and everything. And uh, so Wes Craven, little Wes Craven, looks out the window, and he's, he's scared, so he ducks yeah. back down real quick. But he's like, is he gone? Is he gone? So he wants to look back out, right? Right, you have to check. So he goes to look back out. To see, like, is he still looking at me? And the guy is now right near the window. In the window. And he, Uh. like, lunges his head towards it as if to say, like, yeah, I'm still looking at you. Wow. So Wes, like, screams, but then he sees the guy going towards the door of the apartment building. And uh, I guess he lived on the second floor or something. And uh, so little Wes woke up his brother and his brother got a baseball bat and they could hear the guy, like, downstairs. And they could hear him, like, moving up the stairs, they thought. So Wes's brother went out with the baseball bat, but there was nobody there. Interesting. So he must have just gone. Yeah. But Wes said that stuck with him because this guy, like, was such a nasty guy. Like, he's like, I was a little kid, and he was purposely scaring me. Right. And as, you know, maybe the joke at the window is just a guy, like, noticing that he scared a little kid, and then he wants to take it one step further and say boo, and, like, you know. Right. Okay. But then to, like, add the, like, I'm coming to your building. Right. Walking up to the door. Yeah. He's like, that was too much. Like, that is someone who enjoys, like, hurting children. Right. So, that idea, that shape, that outline, that silhouette, sticks in his mind. And what about Freddy's glove? Well, Wes Craven was designing this movie, and he Mm -hmm. said, I noticed that these slasher movies, the killer always has, like, this iconic weapon. You know, like Jason has his machete and right. Leatherface has a chainsaw. Yeah. Mike Myers has his knife. So I need like an iconic weapon that's not like those things that my killer can have. And as he's thinking about this, his cat comes through and starts scratching the couch. And he like, she was like, he ripped the damn things to shreds, you know. Okay. He's like, wait, that's a good Shred. primal weapon. So he went to the designer and said, like, I want it to look rough. I want it to look like something the janitor could make down in the boiler room and, yeah. you know, melt the metal together. And so that's why okay. it looks like that. So that was the idea behind that. So the story of Freddy Krueger in the movies is that he does something bad to children. Right. And depending on which movie you watch, the bad thing changes slightly. Okay. But he does something bad to children. The parents find out. Yeah. And... They burn him alive. Yes. Hence, he's burned up. Yeah. But then he starts appearing in the children of the town's dream, dreams. Like yes. later on. And he, he can, if he kills you in your dream, then you die in real life. Correct. That's yep. the basic idea. And he's all burnt up and he looks like, you know, cheese pizza. Right. <laughs> Which, by the way, also in about first grade, when it was pizza day, the boys oftentimes would take the cheese off the pizza and oh. hold it up to their face. If not actually, I don't think I actually put it on my face, but I'd hold it up and be up like, Freddy. Freddy. <laughs> yeah. It's another popular thing. Just saying. Okay. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. That was but what was going good. on yep. in the cafeteria <laughs> at the Pitaway School in Ashland, Massachusetts back in the day. Um, but yeah. So the idea of Freddy, originally, Wes Craven wanted him to be a child molester. Oh. Because that was like the worst thing that he oh. could think of. He was yeah. like, I, you know. A child molester is the lowest form of life, and that's what I'll make Freddy Krueger. But then he was worried if he did that, because there were so many stories in the news around this time. Mm -hmm. This was during the Satanic Panic, which has come up on the show before. But there were elementary schools um, that were alleging, there were parents alleging Satanic ritual abuse of the children and saying that they were molesting the children and these weird sex cults, and it it spread like all over. And it turned out n- no cases of it were actually founded, okay. you know, yeah. but it was, you but know. The hysteria was there. Yeah. So Wes Craven said, I'll, I'm, it's going to look like I'm exploiting that if I make him like a child molester. Yeah. So he softened it slightly, mm-hmm. I okay. guess. And I say that with quotations and made yeah. him a child murderer. Right. Which I guess, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a parent, but. Yeah. It's, I don't want either one of those things to right. happen to my it, children, but... Either way. Either way yeah. is, is is bad news. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it is less depraved, maybe, 
could just be a child murderer, not a child molester. But does one happen without the other? I don't know. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess it's true you don't want, not that murder would be necessarily different, but you don't want yeah. to think of your child suffering. Right. Yeah. I, no, I think I, that's what it is. Yeah. In the new, they made, they did a remake. Okay. Uh, and he's clearly a child molester. Oh. In the remake. All right. And he's not funny. He doesn't do, he doesn't like Zinya. No. Before he kills you. A lot of people didn't like the remake and I don't like it as much as the original, but I thought it had its good points. Hmm. I thought it was grittier and all that, you know, but it was missing the heart, I guess I would say, which is maybe a weird thing to point out in a horror movie, but. Um, but that's where, you know, he, he made him a child murderer. Okay. So the big question, All right. the thing that we're really going to look into tonight, yeah, is how did he become essentially a sleep demon? He shows up in your sleep, right? And he, you know, and I already explained how that happens in the story. Well, sort of how it happens in the story. Later in the movies, they say the demons came to him after he'd been burned and said, "Hey, we'll give you eternal life if you'll be our like man on the outside right. and get the kids." Okay. And he was like, "All right, cool." Yeah. Um, but where did Wes Craven get the idea is what we mean. So the idea came from a series of stories which ran around 1982, 1983 um, in the L.A. Times about okay. a whole rash of unexplained deaths All right. that were happening to young Asian men. And... Uh, the reports were basically like they were totally healthy otherwise, but then they'd go to sleep and they'd be, they'd either be found dead or they were found but found by their family, writhing and screaming, and they died like, on the spot. Wow. And one story in particular, really stuck with Wes Craven. There was a, a young Asian man, and uh, I do I keep saying Asian because that becomes important. Okay. So that's I'm not just like repeatingly like oh he's Asian it, it's right. important. Um. He is complaining of these terrible nightmares. All right. And he doesn't want to go to sleep. Understandable. But his father is a doctor. Okay. And his father's like, son, you need sleep. It's important. I'm a doctor. I'm going to give you a prescription for these sleeping pills. So the dad like has these sleeping pills yep. and he starts mm -hmm. giving them to his son. But still, the son doesn't sleep for days. Oh, okay. So finally, he falls asleep. Mm-hmm. And the parents are chilling in the living room, like, finally, he right. went to sleep. He's going to get some rest. Yeah, he'll feel better. It's just normal teenage, you know, hormone nonsense, and right. he'll get through it. But as they're sitting there chilling, they hear him thrashing around and screaming in bed. Okay. So they run up to investigate, but by the time they get there, he's dead. He's already dead. Wow. And there's no like noticeable cause like no. there's no blood or anything like that and the you know the the autopsy doesn't reveal any like abnormal abnormalities or anything right but under his bed under his mattress uh -huh. they find all the sleeping pills he wasn't taking he them he wasn't. was stashing them okay and hidden in his closet yeah he had a mr coffee coffee maker to make sure that he would stay up yeah okay so that's how he'd been staying up all those days interesting so, but otherwise, no known medical issues, no, no reason for any no, and nightmares. The, and, the, and the thing is, this is happening a lot. That's the one case that really stuck in Wes Craven's mind. Okay. But this is happening a lot, but it's only happening to Asian men. And more specifically, men from Southeast Asia. Okay. Which tends to be the area affected by the Vietnam War. All right. Which maybe, so maybe this thing has existed for a while or maybe not. Right. Um, maybe it's got something to do with the Vietnam War, but we didn't notice it in America until we started taking refugees okay. from these countries. All right. Um, or even providing help on military bases close to these countries like Laos and, and, mm -hmm. and Thailand and all that. And uh, noticed that they're like, hey, these, these young guys... Because they were always like teenage, like 18, 17 to 33. Huh. And they were saying usually like 33 was, you know, like was a dangerous age. And this was in the early 80s that the article came out. Yes. 
Okay. So yeah, this is this is happening to a lot of young people, but Freddie isn't real, right? Correct. So who's Correct. right? <laughs> <laughs> so who's killing? What, who or what is killing these people? It's a good question, and people really wanted an answer because they noticed all these people were dying. And again, why was it specifically people from Southeast Asia, from the Philippines, from Japan, and Guam? Those right. were like the hotbeds. And there had to be enough for it to be noticeable. Yeah, and they were all dying in similar ways. Mm -hmm. And because of, you know, the, the laws in certain countries, like the U.S. wasn't always able to speak to people where right. they were happening, but they were sometimes able to speak to survivors. I, I mean, mm -hmm. not survivors, but... The, the families family of and friends and they all those. described like very similar things like perfectly healthy and either we found him dead in bed like over he was totally fine when he went to bed and then you know mm -hmm. um or you know they were screaming and we went to see what was going on and they were dead by the time we got there in singapore alone between the years 1982 and 1990 203 cases were reported and That's in tokyo a medical examiner reported that every year, hundreds of young adults, uh, healthy young males, were found dead in their beds with no explanation. So That's pretty astounding, the yeah, numbers. Right? And again, they point out like, well, the, these are all areas that either were directly affected by the Vietnam War or took in refugees hmm. who had been affected by the Vietnam War. So maybe this has something to do with it. Now, um, science doesn't really think so, except for maybe there's something in the genetics of these people that is causing them to be more likely to <laughs> die mysteriously die. in bed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but science really doesn't have an answer yet as to what this is. But they tried to give some names to it anyway. Okay. One of them is sudden arrhythmic death syndrome. Okay. But they also will sometimes call it sudden unexplained nocturnal death syndrome. Um, but those are the names we use here in the West. But in the Philippines, they call it bangonot. Okay. Which me, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Means to rise and moan in sleep. Oh. And in Japan, they call it pokuri, which means sudden unexpected ceased phenomena. Oh. Yeah. Sounds even more mysterious. So the friends and family of the cases that were studied, which again, isn't all cases. It's only about 5% of the total cases that they've okay. been able to like, that the U.S. has been able to study. Um, they say that in the week before the terminal events, 52% of the victims reported feeling chest pains. 22% hmm. um, reported shortness of breath. 7% reported fainting. And 19% reported that they showed no symptoms or had any complaints at all. So the ones that had complaints of different things were checked, or you would think maybe some of I them were yeah. checked. Um, but Not the uh, the the thing they say is like that no one was really found to have any noticeable signs. But since they um, started doing, I might have this later in the notes, so I might come back to it later, but... If I do, we'll skip it. But what they're saying is because now they're taking in young men of this persuasion and in this age range right, and doing sleep studies essentially on them. Because it's not like they can do a blood test and say, okay, because right. they don't know what it is. They had an idea that it was a chromosome, a mutated chromosome. Okay. Um, and that would explain it. But so far, the people that they've autopsied didn't have any that chromosome mutation that they thought they might have. So hmm. they don't know. Um, but they did these sleep studies and they can, they can see people having irregular heartbeats. Okay. But so far in the study, nobody has died, thankfully. And I assume that they wouldn't let them die. Right. Right. Yep. So they don't know because if that, be... like, because once they have the irregular heartbeat, but then once it kicks back to normal, they're fine. Everything is good. Yeah. And this is all males. Any reports of females? There was one female that I saw. Wow. Um, there might be more. I don't know. But it talks about males, generally. So very minimal if there yeah. were females. Out of the 250, that number that I... Is that what I said? Or 230? The uh, 230 that I mentioned earlier, there was yeah. only one female. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
I wonder what the difference is with that as well. I don't know. But so researchers, you know, given the complaints of chest pain and shortness of breath and fainting and, and that kind of thing. Well, they said, well, this sounds like heart disease. There's some kind of undiagnosed heart disease going on in these people. But their victims reportedly showed no signs of organic heart disease or structural heart damage in their autopsies. So that makes no sense because that should be visible as well. Yeah, you'd say, oh, yeah, they had a blockage right. that nobody knew about. Right. Yeah. And then uh, one of the leading theories is that it's actually acute pancreatitis. Okay. Which is inflammation of the pancreas. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they say that when they do the autopsies, some of them, some of their pancreas, they do look inflamed. But they also note that this could be uh, a result of the autopsy itself. I guess okay. there's some procedure they do in the autopsy that might inflame it. Okay. They recommend just in case that you cut out like carbs and alcohol before bed. Hmm. And what's funny is there was already a folk superstition that you shouldn't eat bread before going to bed. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So it's weird how sometimes like this ancient knowledge kind of does like, you know, maybe they named the wrong reason. It's not because, you know, the goblin of Goglamesh said that this right. should work, but they stumbled upon something that does work for and whatever reason. Um, because you would think that the the younger males anyway that aren't aren't going to be out drinking necessarily so alcohol wouldn't be a part in all of those cases not at all but and i i mean i don't know what the scene is like over there but i mean oh, that's young men too. do drink over here yeah it's it's strange like i said science doesn't really have answers that's the pancreatitis the uh, acute pancreatitis thing is their best guess but mm -hmm. they're not Sure. You know, when science has no answers, people will turn to folk beliefs and yeah. mythology. In many parts, I was going to say in many Asian cultures, but actually all over the world, mm -hmm. um, there's a belief in what you might define as pressing spirits. Okay. These are what the spirits that? that will come to you at night and they, you know, said to sleep on your chest or sit on your chest. Um, incubus, succubus. Okay. Night hag, shadow people. Actually, we did a whole episode about shadow people. It's the first full length episode we ever did. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go back to episode number two, first full length episode. Uh, shadow people, me and Tom Cole talking about shadow people. It's kind of okay. a creepy episode, but it's a good one. But we talk in depth about all that stuff. But basically, all around the world, there's a belief um, about these demons that will sit on your chest because of things like sleep paralysis. And all, there's also uh, folklore saying that cats try to steal your breath at night. I have heard that before. Yeah. And because cats like flat, warm places. So mm -hmm. a human chest uh, is a good spot for them. Perfect spot. But if you're a child or an elderly person or someone who has lung issues to begin with, the extra weight of even a, a cat on your chest can be enough to suffocate you. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of where they think that superstition has come from and i can attest that my cat does occasionally try to sleep on my chest mm -hmm. and even without my even without lung issues it's a pain in the ass yeah like it really is it's like <laughs> all right you gotta get up but yeah there's all sorts of demons all over the world but this was true in these southeast asian countries as well now the theory as far as these demons go is that due to the vietnam war these Southeast Asians were not able to worship or honor their ancestors or local gods um, as they had been doing since ye olden times. Okay. They couldn't go to the temples, the local temples and, and all that kind of stuff. And even maybe just their regular prayer rituals were interrupted because, because you know, the they're, they're, they're soldiering or being soldiered on. And right. So they right. couldn't do it. So because of this... Okay. Those local gods and ancient ancestors were no longer offering protection. Oh. And in this way, mm -hmm. the demons were able to get to these young people. Okay. So that's what led to the demons attacking. And that's really all the notes I have about it. 
It's very interesting. Yeah. And I don't know. The, and I read like several different articles and everything. And I, I didn't find any info on if this is still happening in such numbers. Yeah. Like, was it only this generation of people? Right. Or has it continued on? Right. Because the study ended in what, 1990? Right. So, yeah, it so, would be interesting to see. Yeah. I bet it's out there somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. Yeah. But it's uh, very interesting. I don't believe in night demons, but interesting nonetheless. Sleep is a really strange thing, and I'm very interested in it. Obviously, if you listen to Shadow People and a couple other episodes where we talk about things that happen in your sleep, just how nightmares are formed, like that would be a good topic, actually. Yeah, that would be. Um, Like why you dream in the first place. Oh, it's really interesting to me, mm-hmm. the brain. It's a weird, uh, lots of weird stuff going on up there. That's right. We only use, what, such a minimal percent. Well, it depends who you ask, but yeah, <laughs> that's what they say. That's what some people say, but I've heard that's not actually true. Oh, interesting. But I don't know all the details. Yeah. I have no way to back that up, other than I think I heard that from Neil deGrasse Tyson, that we do use our full brain. Okay. But hmm. he's an astronomer, not a neuroscientist, so... so. Who knows if he knows. Something else to look into. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Do you uh, anything else you have to say about the topic or Freddy? No, I think I'm going to rent the movie. Watch it again. Haven't seen it in a very long time. There you go. Yeah. uh, They're, you know, they hold up okay for the most part. There's some that are, I don't know if you, have you ever seen part two? Freddy's Revenge? I believe I have. Um... Because I can't imagine that I wouldn't have seen it. Yeah. But I don't remember it. It's very... I hadn't seen it until maybe a couple years ago. But it's very unique to the series. Okay. Because, first of all, it's got a male star. Like, he's not chasing after a female. He's chasing after a man. Yeah. Which is odd in horror movies anyway. Um, But especially in these type of slasher films. Right. Um, And there is a lot of homosexual overtones there's like these like grab ass shower scenes huh and it's just it's really interesting it's an interesting movie yeah no i don't i don't recall that yeah but but i'm sure yeah i'll have to go back and whichever one dream warriors is that's the one i like that's the one where they all they basically go into lucid dreaming okay and they're like oh wait in my dreams i get to decide what happens and so, like, I can have superpowers. So now, one how turns many into, were like, a there? Wizard. Were there more? Because wasn't there one where where they came back as oh, adults? How many movies? Yeah. Um. Well, there. Yeah, I get them mixed up. Um, I can't say that I've, I've with the exception of maybe the first one, mm-hmm. and maybe Dream Warriors. I haven't seen them like a bunch of times each. Right. I've seen them like maybe once or twice each. Yeah. Um. There's New Nightmare. Which is supposed to be like, it's Robert England like talking about like, oh, I played Freddy and you know okay. Heather Lagen Camp plays herself, not Nancy. None. Um, the character. Or yeah, and uh, so it's a it's actually an interesting movie. I didn't care for the movie that much, mm-hmm. but the idea, the concept was very interesting. Okay. Um. Yeah, and then there's some that like, you know, Alice Cooper plays his dad in one of them, and. Okay. Yeah, I remember there being there's quite a, a few. Yeah. And then they, then they did Freddy versus Jason. Right. Which I think was the last Robert England appearance, and then they did the remake yeah. with Jackie Earl. I think I'm gonna go back to the original. Yeah. I'm gonna watch that one. It's worth checking out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that reminds me, the lucid dreaming. I had a weird dream the other night. Okay. So, I had a young woman over. Okay. She chose to spend the night. In my dream, Mm -hmm. I woke up in bed next to her. Okay. And it was very real. Like we were, usually when I dream, um, I don't know I'm dreaming, but I'm usually in the house that I grew up in. Okay. Like even if it's set like now. Right. It'll still be in the house that I grew up in. But this dream was actually set in this apartment. And I woke up and I like, I just felt creeped out like right away. I was like, what's going on here? And then I got out of bed to, you know, I don't know if I was going to the bathroom or what, but I got up out of bed and I was like, wait, the hall light is on. Like I could see it through my closet, the door to my closet 
or the the back entrance out the hall. And I was like, I didn't leave that light on. Uh, spooky. Yeah. And then I went to like go look, but then I saw that the door was open a little bit. Huh. And I was like, I didn't leave this door open. Right. I remember locking this door before I went to bed. So then I'm like, somebody's in here. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like walking around in like ninja mode with my hands okay. up. Yeah. Because you know, I'm, to I'm pick up such anything, a maybe ninja. a ba- baseball bat or yeah. A, you know, no, I didn't in the dream. Something. But I come out of the bedroom and I came out here to the living room. Okay. And I'm like ready to kick ass, but there's nobody. But I still just get this really creepy feeling. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, the the young woman woke up in the dream. Okay. And she said Victor Frankenstein. Huh. Okay. And I was like, what about him? And she was like freaking out. And I was like, what about Victor Frankenstein? She's like, no, I can't. I can't. And then she went to the bathroom and like locked huh. herself in the bathroom. And I was like, all right. And then I came out to the living room. Yeah. But when I'm in the living room, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't have a door to the back closet. Oh. Like, I mean, I do, but it's, there's a curtain in front of it. So you wouldn't And see. there's no windows in it. Okay. It's just a door. Yeah. And I was like, so that's not my back closet. All right. And I was like, and this, there was something wrong with my lamp or something. I was like, this isn't real. This is wow. a dream. Right. And I realized it was a dream. I was like, if this is a dream, I, I can wake up. I can get up. But I didn't wake up. Oh, okay. So, so it I'm continued. like, okay. But yep. if this is a dream, like I have power. So I was, I was a dream warrior. Right. Nice. So I thought. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, okay, so I can like, I'm going to be able to fly. Yeah. So this woman came out of the bathroom. And I was in the living room, but it's a straight shot, like, to the bathroom from my living room, right? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to run over there, and I'm going to, like, fly over her head. Okay. But I started to run, and then I woke up. Oh. In my real bed. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Interesting dream. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But I was a dream warrior for a minute, (laughs) but my power was shitty. It was basically just that I could wake up (laughs) eventually. Well, it was was close. I told that to the woman, you know, the next morning. And she was like, even in your dreams, you're skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, wait, because I pointed out the door and I was like, yeah, but that's smart, isn't it? Like to be like, wait a minute. Yeah. That's to not figure that door. out. That's not yeah. what my door looks like. Yeah. Of course, my brain's the one that fucked it up in the first place. Well. Why is it giving me a door that I don't have? I don't know. Uh, it's weird. Yeah. yeah. Someone out there is going to be like super into dreams and they'll do like. They'll dream let you know. Yeah. I've got more interesting one about graveyards. I've had two like big dreams about graveyards. So if you're into dreams, let me know. And I'll tell you all about them. Excellent. Maybe someday, like I said, we'll do one about dreams, dreams. or nightmares. Those are yeah. good ones. All right, Kristen. I think we got enough for a good quality episode here. All right. Well, thanks for so, having me. Well, thanks for coming back. And everyone, please remember to share the show with all your friends who might become spookaroos, as we call our listeners. Nice. When they listen to the show. And uh, please... Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or Stitcher or iHeartRadio or YouTube or wherever you listen to the show. The more comments and likes and ratings that we get, the, the more we get pushed out there and then we get a bigger audience and then we can start doing some really fun stuff like live shows and merchandise and all that kind of stuff. And don't forget to check out the website, SpookyAS.com. You can find us on Twitter at, at SpookyAshShit. Nope, just at SpookyAshShit. Or Instagram, at Spooky As Shit. And you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash spooky as. So, until next time, sweet dreams, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid.